Hey guys, welcome to another Bitter Butter Render Blender tutorial. HDRs are a really good method to get natural lighting. This is where you get a 360 image with a high dynamic range and apply it to a world lighting. Blender then will take information from that image and light your scene. This helps to make your renders look more realistic as the lighting is based off real life settings. Now sometimes you might want a specific setting as your lighting. This especially applies to when you're doing VFX where you add CG elements to real life footage. When it's indoors, you could get away with using manual lighting such as adding lights from Blender's menu, but it's not going to be realistic and if you have shiny meshes such as this scene here, you won't get the reflections which throws off the whole scene. The only issue is that you can't use HDRIs from websites such as Polyhaven and others since they don't have a HDRI of your own room or of a specific place you want. So how do you get custom HDRIs? People usually take HDRIs with a 360 camera, but not everyone has that camera. There's another alternate where you take a DSLR camera and take a picture all around your setting a few times each with a different exposure and then stitch it together using software such as Photoshop. But that's a very time consuming task. So here's a trick to get custom HDRIs with just your phone. There are two apps you can use. If you're on an iPhone which is running iOS, you can use this app called HDRI and don't get mixed up because this is called HDREYE as in your eyeball. But if you're on an Android, you can use your Google Street View app and there's a disadvantage with the Google Street View app. So with HDRI, so the iOS app, the app already takes a 360 image with different exposures and stitches it together already, giving you a high dynamic range 360 image. And then it exports them in an EXR format. However, Street View doesn't do that and it takes a JPG 360 image, resulting in an image with low dynamic range. However, with only three nodes, you can increase the dynamic range of that image. Both these apps require you to aim your phone at a dot in your room and rotate around taking pictures all around you. Okay, once that's done, you can hop into Blender and open up a project. Uh, right now, you probably won't be not able to see the sphere over here, but I do have a sphere with a metallic texture to it so you can see the reflections. Now, I've taken two HDRIs one with the Google Street View app and the other with the iOS HDRI app. I'll tell you how to open the apps and apply it to your world settings. So first over here in the shading tab, go over here into the world section and add a environment node. And with the environment texture node, you can plug in the color into color like always and open up the HDRI that you just took. Right now with the HDRI app, the iOS app, you don't have to do anything. Just like a normal HDRI, you would just open up the image just like I've done here. And since this is a EXR, it already has the dynamic range and you're gonna get the shadows and all that. But if you have the Google Street View app, here are the three nodes you need to add. First, let me open up my JPG file in the same environment texture, just like I have here with the JPG from the Google Street View app that I took. And now with these apps, there are there is an issue which I forgot to mention earlier and that is a few stitching issues as you can see with my table over here you're going to get some duplications and all that but that's fine as you only only need to get the basic lighting and now look you're getting the reflections with the google street view app but the only thing is that the shadows won't be strong enough mainly because the dynamic range is very short so let me just add a plane so you can see better with the shadows and all that and you can see that you are getting shadows but it's not strong enough it's so soft you probably won't even realize it so here are the three nodes you need to add first with your environment node selected plug in the color into the strength and yes that did do something but here's the thing first we're going to add a math node so over here shift a math node and with that math you're going to set it to power and set a value such as 20 like I've did here. And that just takes kind of like the highest light points. You won't be able to see too much of it. And then we're going to add another image or another math node. And that is going to be 
add like it already is, and you're going to set the value somewhere around 0 0.01. And that kind of does the same thing as before, just adds more. And then we're going to open up another math node, the final math node. Set it to multiply and change the value to something around like 100. That's it for today's tutorial. I hope this helped and I'll see you in the next one.